Hi guys, Luke here from Regen Farming again. I just want to have a quick chat today about IMOs, Indigenous Microorganisms. Now if anybody's going into a carbon farming project or wants to grow better pasture, wants to uh, lower their fertilizer rates, wants to have better pest and disease resistance in their plants and animals, IMOs are the ones that do the heavy, heavy lifting in our agricultural environment. Um, it's really important to start to think about our native biology and how we can make that work for us. There's plenty of stuff around now where we're putting out mycorrhizal fungi on the seed and, and nitrogen fixing bacteria and all those sorts of things, but they're already in our soil. And our native biology is going to tend to, if we can get it going really well, it's going to outlast and outperform those ones that we buy in a bottle from India or the United States or uh, somewhere else. So we're much better off getting our Australian native biology going. So I just thought I'd go through a few really simple things today that can help you with your native biology or your IMOs, indigenous microorganisms. Uh, I suppose the, the first really simple uh, thing that we should be always doing is, is where possible, have a growing root in the ground all the time. Um, and where possible have a multi-species um, crop going where we've got more than one uh, species of plant growing so we're putting out different exudates all the time which are feeding different bacteria and different fungi and different bugs uh, so that's what I've got here just a, a mix of seeds and um, and then going along with that grazing management really makes a big difference because if you can graze properly and you've got your plant growing all the time in that energetic um, phase of its life and keep it there you're going to put more exudates into the ground and 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 help that that indigenous microorganisms grow even better um, so another thing you can do is you can actually brew up some of your own uh, native biology. So what I've got here is uh, something called LAB, lactic acid bacteria, and it's pretty easy to make, pretty simple to do, plenty of um, stuff on the internet on how to do it. Um, just use a bit of rice and water and some milk and, uh, and, and, and a little bit of knowledge and you can capture the uh, bacteria from your surroundings. Uh, my suggestion is if you're gonna do it, go to somewhere that's really a great spot on your farm where it's really productive and things are working really well where you don't need to use insecticides and, and fungicides and things like that um, and capture some really good bacteria there and then you can store it stores really well for up to two years if you do it properly and you just put it out and there's some really good benefits to LAB um, with disease protection on your plants and animal health and all sorts of things. Um, so the next one they call IMO2. Uh, so I've gone out I've into a really productive area and I have um, I've basically captured the microorganisms, so fungi and bacteria and, and um, yeasts and all those sorts of things from um, in, in a forest area where there has been no fertilizers used, no insecticides or fungicides used or anything like that, um, and try and do it in a really productive area close to your home, and then you um, and then you store it with. And once you've done that, you mix it with sugar, and and it will store really well in a dark, cool place for uh, forever, basically. And then when you want to use it, you bring it out. Um, you can make um, IMO3, IMO4 and IMO5 from that but IMO3 in our situation I think a liquid IMO3 is the, probably the simplest thing for us to do and you brew it up with some um, good quality worm juice, humic acid, um, fish emulsion or whatever you, you can get your hands on. Um, we could actually help you learn how to do this or you can look it up on the internet it's pretty simple stuff and go from there and then you just spray that out a couple of times a year and you're putting out billions and trillions of, of good biology good fungi good bacteria good yeasts all these things that, that we know help 
uh, our soil health and our plant health. Um, so they're things that you can do yourself, some DIY stuff. Uh, another DIY is probably liquid vermicast, I suppose, or a, a worm wash. Uh, personally, I think it's probably easier just to buy a really high quality one. Um, I tend to use neutral soil. I know that works. I've seen the papers and I've seen the results. Um, I, I know it improves your native biology, your, your indigenous micro, microorganisms. I know it does that. And along with that, it has some great, uh, some great growth promoting pr properties. It's got um, some good nutrition in there for your plants and, uh, and it just helps with plant health and, and those sorts of things. Uh, so yeah, probably neutral soil would be the one I'd look at because uh, I, I know that works and I can recommend that. <coughs> but not least and probably one of the easiest ways to, to get your indigenous microorganisms up and running or uh, and you know get your native biology going is to use a biostimulant. Um, I use I tend to get my customers to use TM agriculture because I know it works I know it's consistent I know it, I know it works every time and um, we've had some really good interesting trial results sent to us lately from uh, a multinational food company uh, a lot of these companies are starting to look at farmers who are using these products now uh, and and, pr and making preferential purchases of them um, over um, uh, over conventional I suppose because that's what the customer is looking for and the trial that they did showed that the mycorrhizal fungi improved by over 500 percent that was pretty amazing uh, the sol solubilizing potassium bacteria, I think, was um, well over that. It might have been over a thousand percent. It was really high. It was, I was quite surprised at how much it was able to stimulate those things. It uh, also stimulated the nitrogen-fixing bacteria by 20 or 30 percent. It was pretty remarkable um, result. So we know that works, and we know with good good management. It, you can continue to keep your biology going. Anyway guys, that's it for me today. I hope I've given you some good ideas on how to stimulate that native biology. It is so important for our agricultural system to get our native biology going. As I said, it is the heavy lifter in, in our world. Um, and if you want any help, just send us a message, give us a ring. We're more than happy to help you out. Anyway, I hope you're living your regenerative farming dream, and if you're not, start today. Have a great day.